Here we go, folks, another episode of the Monday Meetup, Where Are They Now?, where we take a look back at some previous guests. Tonight, we've got James from Fix It Fingers. James first appeared on the show back in Series 1, and his development uh, since that time, both in terms of projects that he makes, uh, his social media standing, he's got quite a following on YouTube now, uh, is an absolute credit to him. Uh, he's entertaining, he's unique, uh, we've got everything from his struggles with the bush turkey in Sydney uh, through to geocaching. I still don't understand it, James, but nonetheless, uh, he's a great guy. He's an important part of the community. I hope you enjoy this look back at our talk with James from Fix It Fingers who never fixed my finger. G'day Ash and g'day everyone back at the Monday Meetup for the Where Are They Now series. My name is James from Fix It Fingers and I appeared in season one when I was very, very new to this whole woodworking hobby. At the time I was only nine months in to what has become the Fix It Fingers workshop and now I am 50 months in. So five times the experience, still crap. Can you hear him? This is what brush turkeys do. They have incredibly powerful back legs and they can move stupid amounts of mulch, soil and leaf litter in a day. Like ridiculous. If you wanted your garden cleaned, they would be the perfect employee. What I'd like to do for you today is to go through a few of the questions that Ash has given for me basically by going through my old episode and showing you how those things have developed. A lot of it is very much the same, including where we are. Got Ash's notes here. And one of the things that hasn't changed is, well, the workshop and the bird noises, and most likely at some stage, a leaf blower is going to go by right out the front. But that's the joy of working in a suburban garage here in the northern suburbs of Sydney. It's a good way, so I've not had any issues with the neighbours, uh, apart from, you know, me making noise, the outside makes some noise, which makes filming videos a little bit tricky. But otherwise, we kick on and keep on. I've got the same amount of space that I used to have, but I'm probably using it a little bit better than I used to. The car still lives here in the garage every day when I am not doing my woodworky type thing. So you may notice that behind me, things do look a little different. And I'll step through some of those changes, not all of those changes. Four years worth of changes will take quite a lot to go through. It's looking a little bit more professional, a bit more organized, and hopefully the progression of my skills. But most of what I had still exists. There was a little workbench sitting right behind me here. It has been torn up and turned into other things. But the guinea pig's hay box is still in existence. Unfortunately, it's now a jigs box, the uh, poor little guinea we lost uh, the other year, so we don't have her with us anymore. But otherwise, yeah, you'll notice a few of the projects are still the same. My original geocaching project is still up on the wall there, the giant Australia, the thing that got me into woodworking. And just yesterday, literally, I continued to sell more of those little Australian park tag holders that I made just three years ago. I think they were exactly on the video. I just finished those now. I still have a couple left over. So the sales, while I don't make stuff to sell, still really since then, I've done some commissions, but I don't make small things anymore. I do on occasion have stuff that comes out of this workshop, which makes me money, but primarily I have been and continue to be a content creator. I love my woodwork. I do it for myself but the product that I make out of this workshop, and hence the uh, branding and so on, is YouTube content. I am a YouTube creator, I will hit 10,000 subscribers, and I don't know how many I was on back on the first one, it was probably about 100. So that's been going well for me. I'm not trying to be a full-time creator, I still have the same job as a scientist, I still like my job, it still gives me the time that I have to be in the workshop. So I'm very happy that the YouTube channel continues to slowly grow and the people who support me are wonderful, this will, for the foreseeable future at least, be a hobby for me. I'm not planning on going full-time. So I'm going to keep referring back to the old video to show you what has changed throughout the workshop, and this is one of the big ones. This I got off my mate Kilby before he went back home to the UK, and it has basically revolutionised early on 
how I would work. It was my first large bench tool, and until recently, it was my only large bench tool. The Bosch Axial Glide Sliding Compound Miner Saw, and this station that I built for it was the first big change that came along, replaced my old little workbench, and it's still one of my main work horses. These cabinets have remained the same. I still do have my love of all things Pocket Holy and Craig. In fact, I've been an affiliate for the Craig Australia brand and Carbotech now for quite a while. And this little guy still gets quite a workout in the Fix of Things workshop. One of my favorite videos that I've made recently is this stool. Bit of an unconventional video. And it was kind of on my woodworking philosophy really of why we make. And it's made from different bits of reclaimed timber, which is basically a theme that runs along here in the workshop. I don't like paying for wood. So nearly everything here was made from scrap. And that is, well, not only environmentally friendly, but wallet friendly. And it just shows you, you don't need to spend a lot of money to go woodworking, particularly on materials, if you're not fussy. I'm still into making my smalls. This will be a dice tower eventually. So the little things, a bit more complicated things, of course, have come along in the past few years. But again, I still mostly make them for myself. Having said that, I just made a lovely Lego shelf for one of my colleagues at work for Chris Kringle. The workshop projects still dominate everything that I do here. This was one of the most tedious but fun uh, additions to the Fixed Fingers workshop last year. It is my small parts storage. And I did that without a table saw. I did it the hard way. And it's still, you know, one of those things that it's a project that you'll look back on and go, well, that was a bit of a level up moment. And things that show you that you are progressing in what you're doing. Speaking of progress, this is a hand tool. I have famously not been using these things, but recently I have started to get into my hand tools. I've got the Melbourne Tool Company Block Plane and Jack Plane. Another Aussie maker, Matt, made this lovely little horn plane for me. So I am slowly building up a collection of the non-powered woodworking tools and having good fun learning how to use them. The second bench tool I added was this cute little Bosch drill press and it has also found its place in my workflow. And speaking of the hand tools, we have got some up here. I like buying tools from other Aussie makers. This was made by my mate Dazza over at 2x4, beautiful little Stabby McStab face marking knife. I've got stuff from Bando's Woodshop, Bip and Envisage Design, Derek Lark. If there's a tool that I don't have and I can acquire it from an Aussie maker, I'd like to acquire it from an Aussie maker. We've got the Aussie makers group over here, which allows me access to see a lot of people's stuff. And when there's something cool that I need, then I will try to pick it up from there. But otherwise, there's a lot of blue you might notice going on here. Because just like before, I am still a big fan of Team Teal. My Makita stuff hasn't let me down. I still have the original power tools that I bought. So some of these are coming up to five years old and I have not had a major issue with any of them. Even the ones I bought secondhand, which could be even older. The Makita stuff, I am just really glad that when I started, I invested in quality power tools. I put quite a lot of hours onto the motors and things and if I had had Royovi or something cheaper, I'm sure I would have burnt through a few of them and had to replace them. So I'm glad that if you are starting out and you can afford it, my number one recommendation would still be to do a trade level. The color doesn't matter, but all the colors are the bloody same. I like Makita stuff, but getting the trade level tools, I think in the long run saves you money and saves you a lot of headaches. But of course there is one very obvious change which occurred very recently, because until then, this, was my table saw. And don't get me wrong, I still love my rip cut and it is still handy for certain things, but now, this is my table saw. I've been working with Carbotech for a number of years now and they just released the compact table saw, the CTS by saw stop, I've always wanted a saw stop, and my argument has always been it wouldn't fit in the workshop, and that was true. The JSS, the smallest one they had before, if I had put it in the spot where this one lives under this workbench, my cool workbench, I love this thing as well, another big change, it would have hit the car, basically, as I was backing in. I would have had scratches all up and down the side. This one was smaller and it was perfect for me, and much to my surprise, when I approached Carbotech to ask them about acquiring said table saw, we managed to work out a deal where they gifted this to me. So, 
it has been wonderful that by being a content creator, I've been afforded several opportunities to advance my woodworking game and work in partnership with the brands. And obviously, you know, getting free stuff is lovely, but it's also about building those relationships. And that gives you a sense of achievement, a sense that you are doing something in the world. If someone trusts you to be a spokesperson uh, and help them advertise their stuff, and it's a bit crude, I suppose. It's one of those social media influencer things. And I still hate that word. I'm not an influencer. I'm a woodworker. I am a content creator. And if what I do helps to guide other people, then so be it. But mostly I'm doing this for fun. And the source stop has been the obvious massive change in the past 12 months to the workshop. And look, this little guy so far has been fantastic. Absolutely everything I could hope for in a small size table saw. A lot of my projects are going to go around this, such as dust extraction, building a workbench so it's not on this stand anymore. I can roll it in and out. It's going to be the main focus of my channel and my workshop probably for the next six to 12 months as I build sleds and jigs and all those things that come along with a table saw. I'm really glad I waited all this time. I could have got a different table saw earlier on, but it made me without one think about my woodworking a lot more and therefore probably enjoy my woodworking a lot more problem solving how to do stuff which you know this makes a lot easier but can be done without one so those are the changes over the past three and a bit years here in the fix the fingers shop i continue to really enjoy my woodworking i'm hopefully getting a little bit better at it and it's just something that keeps me occupied on my days off my job is Kind of unusual and stressful to the point where I'm actually not allowed to speak about it on social media. So that's why you never hear about uh, direct references to my day job. To put it short, it's not very nice. Uh, and it's a sort of job that has incredibly high rates of PTSD. So I have this workshop as an outlet doing something very different and very productive and creative, which really helps my mental health. And fortunately, I've not had any diagnosable mental health conditions or disorders, but I need to watch that and keep on top of it. And I do believe heartedly that my hobbies, including my woodworking, are something that help me manage that and are preventative. And as they say, preventative is always better than a cure. So for those of us lucky enough to have a workshop, I don't think it can be overstated of how beneficial it is, regardless of what your path in life is, to have this escape, to have this ability, to have an audience. To me, it's almost self-therapy. It may not seem like that, but I was a presenter. I was an educator in a previous life, and this lets me hark back to that. And speaking to a camera, even about completely unrelated things to mental health, is good for my mental health. People like Ash have done a huge amount of work uh, on this trademark and his association with them, and you can't really buy this therapy. It's something that if you do, you will benefit from, whether you know it or not. As James has just mentioned, folks, my association with Trademark continues and will continue uh, into the future because I believe so much in what these boys do. Um, mental health support, Trademark funds TX. This is a conversation starter, uh, a free mental health service that can be accessed via telephone or text. Um, so if anyone is struggling, you don't need to struggle alone, reach out. I'll put the details here. Reach out and uh, talk to somebody because it's so, so important that you look after yourself and look after those around you and continue to support Trademark and the work that they do because it's just so, so important. Back to you, James. Our other talking points that Ash gave me are life changes. Honestly, not many. Same job, same beautiful wife, no kids, uh, lost the poor guinea pig would be the biggest saddest event. And uh, we still live in our same place here on the North Shore of Sydney. Life is good, can't complain. Hey, birds. And traffic. Community changes. Well, Really, I suppose like a lot of people who are do the YouTube thing recently and do the Instagram thing recently, YouTube seems to have been in a little bit of a funk. Even the really big creators seem to have been slowing down and it's just a, I won't say a negative energy, just almost like a stale kind of energy with the YouTube scene. 
My observations are that a lot of people who have been making videos for quite a long time have lost their mojo. It's not exciting them anymore for their own reasons, I'm sure. I don't think it's the community that's disintegrating or anything silly along those lines. It's just the cycle that comes in, you know, peaks and lulls. Also, I think it comes through just people's time. Uh, you know, we've had the whole pandemic thing globally and YouTube sort of blew up and exploded because lots of people were at home watching a lot of YouTube and that put a lot of impetus on people to see big returns for their investment. A lot of small channels jumped up because they had the time to film their hobby as well as participate in their hobby. And now that we're all pretty much back to work and hopefully most parts of the world, things are looking up and back to a normal way of life, that time has evaporated and therefore people's ability to create as regularly or to film what is already a long process in doing your hobby has diminished. And that's put a big slowdown on the YouTube maker space, at least in my view. Ironically, it hasn't affected me. My enthusiasm for the hobby is probably higher than it has been in the past couple of years. My list of projects and my desire to get those projects done is as high as it has ever been. There are so many things that I'm excited about doing in the workshop. The hard part for me is prioritizing which one I want to do at this particular point in time. In terms of Instagram, and the kind of ties with the last one that Ash has got on here, social media changes. Uh, Instagram has obviously gone through its own iterations. There's a reason we're doing the Monday Meetup here on YouTube now, because uh, they keep playing around. The rise of short form content. I'm not against it. I don't particularly enjoy it. I'll watch my friends short on YouTube, but I'm never going to go onto TikTok. I don't watch reels unless they come up in my feed and it's something I know. On Instagram, I don't go hunting out shorts and that form of content. I will make them from time to time if I see them appropriate because that's part of playing the YouTube game. And look, it's not a bad thing. Like change is constant, particularly in the social media space. This camera, this video, this microphone is hopefully 10 times better than the one I shot on in 2019. That's progress. And the way that people choose to make their content and consume their content is going to constantly change as well. There's the whole battle of keeping relevant, which luckily as a hobbyist, I don't give a flying fig about because if 10 people watch my video, I don't care. Whereas if you're relying on this as a income, then that becomes more important. You have to chase the trends. And, oh, I'll chase a few trends here and there, trying to you know capitalize on what people seem to want to watch with dollar signs, the titles, the clickbait, and that sort of thing. I've gotten worse slash better at that. But in terms of social media as a whole, I think that I've stopped discovering would be the new thing. I think Grant uh, talked about this on Clamp, uh, the podcast that he does over there with Maker Mackie and now Jess Rapping from Instructables. Go check those guys out. It's that when you're new to the Instagram and make a scene, you seem to make new friends and new contacts and you're sort of growing your circle. And I have definitely felt that in the past 12 to 24 months that I've closed my circle. I still find new accounts from time to time, but nowhere near the regularity that you did when you're new and you don't seek them out as much. Conversely, I've become much closer with a lot of makers who I got in contact with early on, some of whom are going on to do fantastically great things and, you know, either full-time or close to full-time in their maker journey if, if that is what they want. The social media side of things, again, it's different and I think that's just a natural progression. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. Thank you to Ash for inviting me back onto this recap of the Monday Meetup. If you'd like to see more Fix Your Fingers, of course, there is now a huge catalogue, many hundreds of videos which I've been able to spew out over the past four years. Some of them are even not shit, and I hope you find them educational and entertaining. I am forever a novice. Everything I do, I'm often doing for the first time. A lot of table saw stuff coming up, obviously. I do what gives me joy, and usually that's exploring new things rather than making the same chopping board over and over again. Still haven't made a chopping board, but I have made, what was that thing? Wait, picture frame. Yes, I have made a picture frame for the very first time. This is James from Fix the Fingers, and thank you very much for joining me and Ash on this look back of the Monday Meetup.